There are 1,200 undocumented people residing in the United States. Due to their undocumented status, they are rendered as illegal residents and thus per law enforcement are to be supported. Through our research, we have gathered incontrovertible information suggesting that any real enforcement of deportation would jeopardize the American economy, security, and our proclaimed values. In fact, we have found that such illegal immigrants contribute in a positive manner towards American amnesty prosperity. Thus, it is crucial and consequential that amnesty is added for the deportation to replace such contributions. This brings me to our proposition, that is, amnesty shall be granted to the undocumented who have resided in the United States for at least five years. The conditions will be part of our plan of action to ensure that those who we grant amnesty to are those pursuing the American dream and offset any new costs. Firstly, I'll lay out the conditions of our policy. Then I'll make the argument for which why it is the best plan of action as it solves the problems inherent to deportation. The conditions. The following have been determined as candidates. One, they have resided in the United States at least for five years. Two, they have abided the law otherwise. And three, pay the naturalization fee, <coughs> if any back taxes included, and post the fund for processing costs. Given these conditions, we ensure to retain the people who are condu conducive to our economy. It will in fact make things safer and ultimately exercise our nation's principle of being the place of opportunity for immigrants to foreign lands, which we need to the first point, American economy. The National Academy of Sciences released a study regarding the effects of immigration on the economy. In this report, Chairman James P. Smith, a senior economist at California-based R&D Corporation, said, immigrants may be adding as much as $10 billion to the economy each year. Also in the same report, it was written that immigrant labor allows many goods and services to be produced more cheaply and provides for workforce and businesses that otherwise would not exist, such as America's textile and agricultural industries. This may be very confusing to hear because lately, immigrants are regarded to as people who don't contribute anything to the economy. Former President Bill Clinton, one whose position warrants him to be knowledgeable of such affairs and given insight, by the country's top experts assert that the vast majority of these people pay taxes. This isn't hypothetical stuff. Federal laws were enforced in several cities like New Haven, Connecticut, where federal agents came into the town and arrested illegal immigrants and enforced federal sanctions. So what happened? As Vice President Biden stated, the city imposed similar sanctions and what they found out is that as a consequence of that, the city went in the dump. Stores started closing. Everything started to happen, and they changed the policy. This was just a town so the federal agents were capable of doing a small town. However, to do this on a national level is a different story, and they would jeopardize our scrutiny, security. This leads me to a second issue, one of inherency. Just think, almost every joke that a person can say about Mexican immigrants has something to do with strawberry picking, selling orange by the freeway, or picking cotton. These jokes are actuality. Mexican immigrants do work on farms and pick strawberries and cotton. Now, are these immigrants to be deported who have been farmed? Second, <coughs> security. American security, uh, oh, to capture all 12 million undocumented, we have to ask ourselves, is it logis logistically possible? And what would be the consequences? As President Obama stated, we would have to use all our law enforcement resources. We couldn't go over gangbangers. We couldn't go after auto theft. We would have to use every single law enforcement officer to go around and round up folks who are working at restaurants. In the era of terrorism, it is irresponsible to divert our focus from potential terrorists who hate American ideals rather than deport illegal immigrants who do not wish any harm on our society, or else they wouldn't be here. These immigrants are here to pursue the American dream and believe in our ideals. So I want to argue that the illegal immigrants are a source of crime. A video on c um, depicts Bill Clinton talking in South New Hampshire discussing the immigration issue. He says, The vast majority of these people are completely law-abiding and they pay taxes even, but they're not here lawfully. There's no way if there's 12 million here, which is the estimate, that we're going to find 12 million people. Also, there is a strong correlation between poverty and crime. Inherent to the legal status is the exploitability of cheap labor at the minimum wage levels. 
One citizen, such people will be warranted at least a minimum wages, a positive step out of poverty. Lessen or remove the poverty, and we lessen the probability or likelihood of crime associated poverty, such as theft and burglary, burglary, etc. On the Christian Association for Prison Aftercare website, Joseph Williams wrote an article stating, Sociologists and criminal justice scholars have found a direct correlation between poverty and crime. The logical conclusion to this theory is that people living in poverty are far more likely to commit <coughs> poverty crimes such as burglary, larceny, or theft. Higher wages would thus lower the chances of crime associated to the poverty parents to low wage illegal immigrants. Wouldn't this also restore their dignity, knowing they are not being exploited to their status and reinforce their hope in the American dream? I quote President Clinton giving his opinion on illegal immigrants. I think, he says, I think the humane thing to do here is to give the people that are that are and are working do not have no law problems except that they are not here illegally a chance to work their way into legal citizenship. <clears throat> My last thing is the disadvantages of no amnesty. Like people say, where there's a will, there's a way. But if no amnesty was to be granted, what would actually happen to these people? Legal immigrants are already in poverty, according to the Heritage Foundation, Robert Rector writes. Hispanic immigrants have particularly low levels of education. More than half live in families <coughs> headed by persons who lack a high school diploma. If immigrants who are legally in the United States cannot support themselves, then how can immigrants who are illegally here? <coughs> Poverty causes anguish and suffering, and people who come to America for a new dream are not given the chance to survive. Thank you.